Welcome to AMG YouTube channel. AMG is your health companion. Today, we are very fortunate to invite our AMG community partners, NACOS. So NACO has sent its uh, representative, um, Leah Yu, with us. And Leah Yu is the health educator um, for the uh, tobacco cessation project. And we would like to uh, learn from her how um, through her experience, helping many people successfully quit smoking during the pandemic. Thank you, Leah. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me today. So let me ask you a question. Smoking, it's bad for the smokers. Will it affect the people around them? Um, yes, the answer is yes. Um, um, smoking can also affect the people around a smoker. And the reason it's because of second and third hand smoke. I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with what second hand smoke is, which is breathing in the smoke released from a smoker. However, for third hand smoke, it might be a new term for some of you guys. And so third hand smoke, it's basically the residue of smoke or leftover um, of tobacco products or the or the particles that is left behind on services such as door handles, um, furniture, clothes, hand, uh, hair, and etc. And people can be exposed to third hand smoke through contacting with these contaminated services. Hmm, I see. That's a good yeah. description. So may I ask um, uh, some people actually have tried quitting smoking in the past, but haven't been very successful. Could you um, explain uh, why this happened in your experience? Um, I just want to say that quitting smoking, it's not an um, easy process. Uh, usually for a lot of smokers, it takes several or even many tries in order to success to successfully quit smoking. Um, back in February, when I conducted a um, tobacco free class series i had participants who told me um, they had quit for uh, over a month and some even a year but for some reasons they experienced relapse they have gone back to smoking again and that's how they ended up in my tobacco cessation class so i just want to say that um yeah for to in order to quit smoking successfully the individual has um, have to find uh, the right method to help them to quit such as using medications, uh, which are called the nicotine um, re replacement therapies. They are medications that help smokers with their withdrawal symptoms. They can also attend um, cessation classes and gaining support from their fam family members and friends. And I just want to say that quitting smoking is hard, but you all can do it and um, don't give up. Just keep trying until you, uh, you're successful. Mm, that's good. So um, may I ask why it's so difficult to quit smoking? Well, it's very difficult to quit smoking because of the three challenges smokers face during their cessation process. And this is known as the triangle of addiction. So um, a triangle has three corners, right? So each corner of the triangle represents one challenge. So the smoker is basically stuck inside the triangle. And in order to successfully quit or break through this um, triangle, he or she needs to fight off these challenges. So the three challenges are emotional need, physical need, and habit. And emotional need, it's um, basically emotions that trigger someone to smoke um, so they use smoking um, as a coping mechanism. And then for a physical need, or we can call it addiction, it's our brain and our body is addicted to a chemical that is found in all tobacco products, which is um, nicotine. So basically this chemical relaxes the body and reduces stress and anxiety. And this is the reason why smokers are addicted to smoking because their brain enjoy having this pleasant chemical in their body system. And lastly, it's habit. So like over time, a smoker will begin to incorporate smoking as part of their daily life. And they may also have come, come to associate smoking with other activities or with certain situations. For example, one might smoke whenever they are on their lunch break at work or hanging out with friends. So could you actually explain some uh, very effective uh, strategies to help a smoker to quit um, smoking successfully? I actually have a couple of um, effective strategies that um, it's that's effective to help someone to quit. So the first one would be um, 
first of all, they need to identify the trigger that make them want to smoke. So um, after, uh, if they're able to identify the trigger, then they can come up with like alternatives or solutions to address the trigger. For example, like when they're feeling unhappy, instead of smoking, they should maybe talk to someone or um, I guess uh, distract themselves from from uh, being unhappy. And also, secondly, um, they can use nicotine replacement therapy. Um, again, they're a form of medication that help with withdraw symptoms. So they comes in the forms of lozenges, patch, gum, a patch and the gum. So four forms of um, the NRTs or the medications. And thirdly, um, you can keep track of your daily smoking intake. Um, you could do that um, on a piece of paper uh, or there's also apps where you can use to keep track of your smoking um, intake. So if you're able to do this consecutively for over three days, then you might be able to find if there is a particular time or a particular emotion that tends to um, um, trigger you to smoke more, then you can you know, come up with solutions to address that. And lastly, um, there are five things that a, smoke, a smoker should do to cope with urges. Uh, for example, they should drink water, delaying their craving, taking deep breaths, um, just forming discussion with their loved ones or, fam or um, friends. And also lastly, it's to distract themselves from um, having this desire to smoke. And these are all the effective strategies that I have. That's great, yeah. I think, thank you for the tips. I think those are very useful. Um, during the pandemic, um, uh, could could you actually explain to us um, for smokers, are they at high risk? How easy they uh, would contract it with the COVID-19? So according to the World Health Organization, um, they stated that smokers during this pandemic are at a higher risk of contracting the virus. And the reason is that um, the act of smoking requires um, the use of hand to mouth movement. So there is a possible transmission of the virus uh, being transferred from our hand to our mouth if, if we don't keep our hands clean. And I also want to talk about like um, smoking itself, it's already impairing one's lung function. So it will make it even harder for the body to fight off the coronavirus infection and other respiratory diseases in the future. So during this pandemic, um, the WHO, they recommend that smokers should consider quitting smoking to protect their health. Mm, I see. So during the pandemic, a lot of people are quite stressful. Mm -hmm. So would this increase um, tobacco usage? Yes, to some degree, it will increase their tobacco usage. Um, I just want to share out that according to the CDC, um, they stated that uh, whenever people feel stressed, they will start to smoke. People use smoking as a self-medication to cope with um, any unpleasant feelings that they're having. For example, feeling unhappy, feeling frustrated or um, having or experiencing stress. And the reason why people um, will use smoking as a way to cope with negative feelings, and it's because of the, um, there's a chemical, like I mentioned earlier, nicotine, it's a chemical that makes the body feels relaxed, feels, um, feels at peace. So, and this is the reason why people are, you know, addicted to the use of smoking as a way to cope with any stress that they have or any negative emotion that they have. But I just, um, I want to emphasize that smoking does not help us to get rid of stress. It can only provide a temporary, temporary relief from the stress. However, the stress will eventually come back to us because we're not taking any action to address it. Mm, I see. Could you actually elaborate on how tobacco usage uh, related to mental health? Mm, well, so um, for some people, they may not realize that tobacco use actually um, like have a mental health component to it, which is addiction is due to the chemical dependence in the brain. Specifically, the brain is addicted to this chemical nicotine. And again, like I mentioned earlier, nicotine, it's a um, chemical that helps uh, the body to feel, to feel relaxed and feeling um, less stressed and our brain um, enjoy having this ple pleasant feeling. However, this effect only lasts about five minutes at a time. 
So once the effect is gone or the concentration of nicotine is running low in our body system, our brain sends a signal us to start to smoke to deliver more nicotine into our body. And this is a repeated cycle. So we do it over and over again. And um, I also want to touch upon um, about individuals with um, mental health illnesses. So according to the American Psychological Association, uh, people uh, with pre-existing pre mental health conditions are more likely to use tobacco to hide their symptoms so that um, they don't experience it and also um, to mask awake any um, side effects from a medication that they are using. And I want to point out that given the current pandemic and the rise in violence against um, Asian Americans, for folks who have been already been affected by a certain health, mental health condition, um, there's a possibility that these events will trigger them to smoke even more. So um, I just want to say during this challenging period, we should pay more attention to um, these individuals. So and could you actually share with us any uh, community resource uh, assisting in uh, quitting smoke? So there are a couple of resources that are available in the community to help smokers. Um, the first one is that um, we can get help from our physicians. They can provide us guidance on what to do and possibly even prescribe medications to help us with um, the withdrawal symptoms from quitting smoking. And then secondly, we can look for if there are cessation classes that are being offered in our community. And thirdly, our organization is currently working on this tobacco-free project. So if anyone is interested in quitting, feel free to reach out to me. My phone number and my contact info are listed in the slides. And so, yeah, during the call, um, I will provide you with a brief counseling. And let's say if you need additional help, for example, if you're interested in the um, smoking um, cessation medication, then I can um, refer you to the Asian Smokers Quit Line. Um, they are currently offering the free two-week starter kit of nicotine patch. So yeah, I can refer you and then you can um, get this free nicotine patch for two weeks. And um, also our organization is providing an extra incentive for whoever um, call us um, um, to ask this question about um, smoking cessations. So um, the extra incentive, it's a water bottle contains with a lot of small goodies in it. And um, we also provide a, um, um, a mask and also a bottle of hand sanitizers. Oh, sounds great. Thank you so much for your resource. I think a lot of viewers can benefit from it. And hope to see you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.